Coming up on Doctype, we're going to take you behind the scenes and show you exactly how to make a web show. So prepare to take a peek behind the curtain because it's time for Doctype. I'm Nick Pettit. And I'm Jim Hoskins. And you're watching Doctype. Whether you're a designer that's absolutely terrified of code, or a developer who thinks the golden ratio is a fast food combo meal, Doctype has the latest tips, tricks, and tools to help make you a pretty well-rounded web developer. Indeed. So, coming up very soon in just a couple of weeks is Bar Camp Orlando. It's on Saturday, April 2nd, 2011 from 9.30 to 6 p.m. at Wall Street Plaza in downtown Orlando. You can find out more about Bar Camp Orlando at barcamporlando.org. And of course, if you've never been to a bar camp or if you've never been to Orlando, April 2nd would be a great time to go. Yep. Also, later on in April is LessConf. LessConf 2011 BCE. Jim and I have been to every LessConf so far, and they're always totally, totally awesome. This one is going to be in Atlanta, Georgia on April 29th and April 30th, and you can go to lessconf.lesseverything.com to find out more. And uh, we love Alan and Steve. Yeah, be there <laughs> or be sad. So this week we're gonna be showing you a little bit about how we create Doctype. We get a lot of emails and questions just about how we produce Doctype, what kind of hardware we use, and just really what goes into it. So we wanted to take you this episode just sort of behind the scenes on the whole process and how we got started. Let's check it out. So a lot of people seem to be under the impression that Doctype is some kind of huge production, but it's actually just Jim and myself, which is why everything is on remote control. I'm holding the camera remote and Jim has the lighting remote, which we'll be talking about in a little bit. Uh, we have a two camera setup and Jim can tell you about those. So two camera setup is kind of what we wanted to go for. So you could see the cool switching that you may have just noticed. It gives us a little bit more control in the editorial process because being able to move cameras back and forth will allow you to keep the, use, the viewer's attention a lot better than just sort of keeping one static shot. So we're using Canon Vixia HG20 camcorders and those are consumer grade camcorders. They cost us about six or seven hundred dollars at the time that we got them and we chose them because they were a good sort of balance of price and quality they shoot pretty good 1080p especially if you have the correct amount of lighting and they were cheap enough that we could afford to do two and set up our two shot like this yep now we went with consumer grade cameras and we went with a two shot setup but if you wanted to go a little bit higher quality and you just need one shot you might want to think about maybe going with a DSLR camera like a Canon 7D or even a Canon 5D Mark II. DSLRs can shoot really great high quality 1080p video. They have you know nice big sensors that are much better than a consumer grade camera and they also have larger lenses lenses which are going to give you much better picture quality. So that about wraps things up for cameras. Next up is sound. When you record sound for video you want to make sure that you're using an external recording device. We're using these little lapel mics. You don't want to use the internal microphone on the camera. Here's what the internal mic on the camera sounds like when I'm seven feet away and it probably doesn't sound very good. Nope, not at all. So here's our normal sound and what we use for our sound are these lapel or lav or lavalier microphones. They're basically just these little guys that clip to your shirt and we actually have a wired system that runs directly into an external audio adapter for our camera which will convert the large XLR cables into the tiny uh, microphone input. You can use lapel microphones or if you want to record sort of a larger sound, something like an external shotgun microphone placed properly can get you a lot better sound. Basically you just don't want to use the internal microphone on your camera because it's a tiny little hole that's really far away from you and it's picking up everything around it. So and you really want to focus all your sound on what you're trying to record. And that's just not going to sound very good, basically. What we're using are the Samson QL5s. They're not currently in production, but we chose Lowe's because, again, they're economical, good reviews, and we went with a wired setup versus a wireless setup because we don't need wireless. It's just more hassle and more cost. So Yeah, definitely. Now, we also use 
sound paneling or acoustic treatment to kind of deaden the echo in the room. If you think about like a bathroom in an unfurnished house, it's really echoey before you put things like towels and carpeting and just other stuff in the room. So basically all you want to do is get soft stuff on the wall. Basically large flat surfaces are going to cause that echo, which makes you sound like you're in a garage or a bathroom or something like that. Um, in our first studio, what we did, since it was just a bedroom in my house, is we bought mattress pads from Walmart. So we spent maybe a couple hundred bucks on that, but it was nice that they're big, you know, soft things and you can tack them to the walls and ceilings and it'll cut down the echo considerably. In our current studio, we have some more professional sound tiles that are really designed for it. So you can go from really cheap to really expensive or just, you know, tack some like bed sheets to your wall. That's, you know, a lot of what you can do to deaden the sound in the room. Definitely. So that about wraps things up for sound. Next, we're going to talk about lighting. Listen, you need a domain name. You know it, I know it, but where are you going to go get it? GoDaddy, that's where. If you're looking to drive viewers to your video content, then .tv domains are where it's at. .tv domains are perfect for podcasters, video bloggers, and anyone with something to say. And they're available now at GoDaddy.com. Heck, where do you think we got Doctite.tv from? So, we know you all get your domains from GoDaddy, but whose code are you going to use? Enter the code DOCTYPE3 when you check out and save an additional 10% off your entire order. Some restrictions apply see site for details get your piece of the internet at godaddy.com continuing on the same idea as sound is lights basically use external lights because what you have is probably not enough any external lights are going to be better than what you're already dealing with so as an example of that we're going to show you what a normally lit room would look like using our setup and the lighting in this room is actually perfect for day-to-day -day conversations and working but in the camera it looks really really dark and then this is our normal setup with a couple thousand watts of lights going on us right now so basically this is just going to cost you a couple hundred dollars you don't need to spend a whole ton of money on this unless you really want to you're probably going to need at least a thousand watts of light or more depending on the size of the room and depending on the camera and lens you're using and so on now we have ours hooked up to a nice little remote control power strip and since we're using a fairly low amount of light as far as like studio lights go we can get away with this cheap little hack so basically all i need to do is flick this switch and we can turn the lights on and off which is really important for us because between takes we don't want to keep the lights on because it is super super hot so having a way to turn on and off the lights easily if you don't have an assistant to do that for you is a great investment indeed so that's it for lighting. Now we're going to talk a little bit about our studio. So the next thing is obviously our set. Now if you've been watching Doctype for long enough, you'll probably realize that this is not the initial version of our set. This is our latest version and it's a little fancier than we began with. So what we started with was really just in my second bedroom. I had a blank wall to shoot against and enough room to set up a cool set. And what we wanted to do is sort of have a black table with sort of a corner configuration with one of us on either side. And so what we ended up using were um, pretty much simple card tables uh, arranged in a V formation. And then to get the surfacing for it, we put black bed sheets on it. And once it's that dark, you don't really notice the creases and stuff in there. So you can get a pretty good look just doing that. Uh, a big problem was actually raising card tables to a standing height. Uh, we had a bunch of different solutions, but it turns out that we could lift the whole thing up using IKEA end tables by basically putting a card table on top of an end table. <laughs> and those end tables cost you know, like eight bucks, so they're like the cheapest thing in the world to like raise stuff up compared to like normal risers. But the latest version of our set is actually made completely out of those tables. <laughs> so we've got 100% IKEA tables now. <laughs> so you may not notice it, but yes, these are IKEA tables. We have about two and a half of them stacked on top of each other and just sort of drilled together and then a couple of extra faces up here and it kind of looks crazy in real life but I mean remember that your shots are going to be cut in a lot so you can get away with a lot as long as the top looks good and the front looks pretty decent and then obviously we have our TV here which is something that we had in the office we have a nice sort of rolling stand that we were able to just kind of put it behind our set and then when we're not using it we're playing video games on it pretty much Basically. so it's not you don't have to use all these things for one purpose only they can go back to being your family tv so pretty simple setup you don't need to spend a whole ton of money on the set and that's 
pretty much it. But of course, if you have your own garage and workshop, you can make some awesome custom furniture. But yeah. us, all we had were a couple of screwdrivers and. We're web designers and developers, <laughs> not carpenters. So next, we're going to talk a little bit about the post-production. So after we're done shooting an episode of Doctype, I dump all of the footage into Final Cut Pro and edit it all together. Usually I'll run some noise reduction on the sound and keep things pretty simple there. I don't really do any kind of EQ or anything fancy like that. And then I'll do some color correction on the actual video, which is always a good idea. You can always enhance the look of footage just by doing really a small amount of color correction. When I'm all done editing and dropping in motion graphics from Apple Motion, I will go ahead and export to H.264 and upload to blip.tv. Now blip is pretty cool because you can host as many MP4 files there as you want and there's unlimited bandwidth. So we host all of our files there and that allows people to download them directly. It allows us to push to iTunes, our RSS feed and things like that. And then the other cool thing about Blip is that it also allows you to push to other platforms like YouTube, which we use for the player on our site. So after we've uploaded our video, the next thing is to actually create the episode on our doctype.tv site. The site we use was a custom built Rails app that we designed and built ourselves, but you could use something like WordPress or Tumblr or any other platform really just as easily. We just chose to make something because we wanted a lot of control and we like making websites. So we'll put in the title and the show notes, the YouTube URL, the download URLs for the podcast and iTunes and all that stuff. And then we just click publish and send it out to all of you. And once we've published an episode on our site, we'll go ahead and announce it on our Facebook fan page at facebook.com slash doctype. And we'll also announce it on our Twitter account at doctype TV. So we hope that gave you a little peek into what goes on in making a doc type and maybe gave you the confidence and information you need to create your own web show on the cheap. That is it for this week. Until next time, be sure to check us out at facebook.com slash doctype and follow at doctype TV on Twitter. And if you have a question you'd like answered on a future episode of Doctype, send us an email at questions at doctype.tv. And if you subscribe via iTunes or RSS or YouTube, you'll never miss another episode of Doctype. So come on, why not? So until next time, remember that every great web page starts with Doctype.